Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about farming on a slope. This is a question that a lot of people have come at me with over the years. Curtis, is it possible to have a market garden on a slope? If so, what does that look like? So I've got two examples of farms we're gonna look at today. I've never run a farm myself on a slope, but I've seen it done and I'm gonna share with you the things that I know. All right, let's get into it. So there's two farms I wanna show you guys today. The first farm is Le Ferme des Quatre Temps. That's Jean-Martin Fortier's farm. I've been there, you've seen me do videos there. And it's not totally obvious when you look at the farm, but it is on a slope, especially near the top. So we've got this area up here, and this area is the slope, and it actually starts to, to go down from there. So it's probably only, you can see that these are sloping down like this, and it's probably only about a 15 degree slope, kind of, or not 15 degrees, sorry, five degrees, not five percent, five degree slope right there. Now if I go to the next slide here, it's a little bit more obvious. You can see that the ground is kind of going down like this, and they actually have these ponds in there that uh, that kind of that catch the water that runs off to prevent uh, excess runoff from their compost. Um, I think that was sort of an environmental concern for them on the advice of some agronomists, but I haven't seen a lot of evidence to show that um, nitrogen runoff from compost is causing any significant environmental damage. I would have my doubts on this. However, I wouldn't rule it out as a possibility. Either way, that's beside the point. The thing that's important to point out about this site is there is a slope, and I think a lot of people who come from the permaculture space assume that you're going to terrace beds. So you, they're gonna assume, if I can just draw up here and where the trees are, that if you have a slope like this, that you're going to terrace the land like that. And it all depends on the type of climate you're in. If you're in a wet climate where you've got a lot of rain, that doesn't necessarily make sense, especially if your slope isn't extreme. Now, I would say you wouldn't really need to terrace anything up until about, if you're passing about 25, degrees in grade, then maybe you might want to start considering terracing. But I'll show you another example of a, a farm called Pakaraka that I've been to in New Zealand that has a bit more of an extreme slope and they're also doing something that's um, quasi-terracing. But when I show you that one, I'll explain terracing a little bit more. And we've all seen the terracing in places like farms in Vietnam or parts of of Asia where this has been going on forever and it's it's amazing and they do it there because they're farming on very extreme slopes you know over 30 degrees probably up to 45 degrees slopes very extreme stuff and this is this kind of terracing requires radical earthworks and that's not what I'm going to get into today because if you want to find out about that you could probably look at some more of the content produced from some of the permaculture folks like Jeff, Jeff Lawton who has done it in the past um, and even just look at some of these farms in Asia. This has been going on for thousands of years. It's nothing new. But so here at Le Ferme de Quatre Temps, they don't want to put their beds all along the terrace. They actually are running their beds down the slope. And the reason for that is they get so much rainfall there that they actually want to direct the rainfall off the beds. So this is why they have their beds raised. So I'll just draw up here in the top corner. The beds on this farm are kind of shaped like this. So this is your walkway in here, and this is your bed. So the whole idea here is that because you have excess rainfall, you actually want that rain to go into the walkways and then funnel it away from your beds. This could be another reason for doing the ram ramiel wood chip technique and also putting as much sort of organic matter on those beds and even in the walkways because that's going to prevent erosion, right? If, you're, if your walkways were bare, then you would probably have, you know, a lot, a lot of that soil just running away and so maybe you'd want to keep it there in place. You know, who knows? Who, who's to say that, that that soil in the walkway really matters that much, but you might want to keep it in place nonetheless, and that could be a reason for mulching your walkways. But I will say, mulching walkways doesn't necessarily make maintaining your walkways easier. From what I can tell, it makes it more difficult, because if you put 
ramming your wood chips into your walkway, you're not going to get less weed pressure. <laughs> this is not the case, at least in my observation. Anybody that I've seen do this still gets weeds. It just makes it harder to push a wheel hoe or a stirrup hoe through them because you got these wood chips. And if you're managing them with your stirrup hose or wheel hose, you're gonna be mixing in dirt anyways. And the, the walkways are gonna kinda end, end up just looking like dirt. Like at this farm, walking up and down these walkways, you can't really tell that there was wood chips in it. They, they just look like dirt or soil in the walkways. So in this example, they've got their land terracing down. Another thing that's important to point out about this farm layout is that this top area here is the most high and dry area of the farm. This going down this way is their south. That's why their greenhouse is here orientated east and west. So a lot of their earliest plantings on this farm, in fact, the earliest field plantings on this farm, not including the ones in the greenhouse, are done on the top area here, which is the most high and dry area. And then the, the, the water runs down and then the fields that are down actually below by the greenhouse are the last fields that they plant during their season. So those fields might only get one, maybe two crops in them, whereas the fields up here will see three crops. So we've got a gradual slope. We've got the beds directing the water away because it's a heavy rain climate. Now there is an exception to this and this is the one I wanna show you. This here, this is Pacaraca. I've been to this farm, it's a quarter acre market garden. And uh, a lot of people in my YouTube comments really like to debate that this, they think this is more than a quarter acre. You guys, it's not, I've actually done a video on it. When I say this is a quarter acre, when we say this is a quarter acre, we're referring to this area here. This production area here is a quarter acre. It's indisputable, you guys. It's a quarter acre, trust me. Anyways, the, the whole operation is, is on quite a bit of a slope. If you see here in this drone shot going around, you can see quite a steep slope here and then less of a slope here and even slope here. So they've set up the whole farm in that way and the, the, the beds on the less on the more gradual slope, let's call it this one here might only be about five degrees. So that's gonna be a slope that's you know kind of like this, five degrees, similar to Jean Martin's. But then this area here is a bit more sloped. So this one might be, you know, this one could be 10 to 15 degrees, I'm not exactly sure. But you can see by the way they have it laid out that they have, they're running their beds according to that. So here on this, on these ones, they've got these beds actually running more or less on contour. Not exact, but more or less. This is also a, rain, a heavy rainfall area too. So they don't necessarily need to be holding water into the landscape. They probably might want to redirect it in some way. But because this area is more extreme, they've got the beds running along the slope. And then they've got the same thing here. If you look at the strawberry patch here, it's a similar thing. It's, it's a slightly more of a um, extreme slope than they've got down here. And actually what happens on the farm too is this area here, the, the sort of the, uh, I call them hippie beds, beds that aren't straight. <laughs> no, no offense to them, this is what I call them. Um, They've actually done it in, in a way that makes sense of the context because that slope is kind of going out like this. It's, it's, it's not just a slope going in a sort of a two-dimensional way. It's more of a three-dimensional slope that bulbs out, bulbs out. So that actually kind of makes sense the way they have those beds running on there because it's actually following more of the, the natural contour of the land. The whole land on the corner is starting to roll out this way. So the way they've got their bed set up on this farm totally makes sense for the context. Now, I want to show you, okay, well, here, here, actually, here's the, stra here's the strawberry patch um, more close up. So you can actually see the natural slope of the land there. So, you know, we might be at something like, I've got a little, uh, I've got a square here to give me a reference on my degrees. You know, that, that actually might be about 15 degrees on that particular part. And you can see they've got their beds laid out that way. It makes a lot of sense. Um, when you're there, it's quite obvious and um, this works for them. The one challenge, if you're running beds like this on that kind of a slope, and it's neat that he's got his strawberries here, it almost makes the most sense. Um, if, you're, if you're turning these beds over and over and over, 
you are going to see a natural erosion as you work those beds down that the walk the, the dirt is are going to naturally just fall into the walkways below the next bed so if you've got your land terrace like this let's just say these are just beds your dirt's going to kind of keep moving its way down there and so it's going to shift down so if it were me and i and, and i had a lot of slope on this property and I wanted this area to be high rotation in that I'm gonna be replanting and turning these beds often over and over again. I might actually terrace this and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, let's just pull up a blank piece of paper here. So if we had, let's call it um, a slope that was around 15 degrees, let's just say that's around 15 degrees. What you might end up doing is creating a small retaining wall here and there. This is kind of an easy way to do it. Well, it's not that easy, but it's a way where you could create somewhat of a terrace. And what you might do is cut into the land here and then maybe here. And what you would do is just, you would basically scrape off your topsoil here. So let's say you've got six inches of good topsoil you'd bring in a backhoe or maybe even a bobcat and scrape off that top six inches to maybe even a foot of topsoil because you don't want to mess that up. So you put your topsoil somewhere where you can bring it back. Then you're going to come in and you're going to excavate and you're basically just going to pile this down into a sort of a mound. It's similar to creating a swale, you know, where you've got Jeff Lawton's sort of idea of creating the swale. You take your ground from here and you pile it up here, but you're just gonna make it more level. And then you're gonna do the same thing down here. Now, you can just, oh, let me just delete all that. Now you can basically just shape some beds. So let's just draw what that would look like. You would have a couple terraces. You'd have some kind of retaining wall there. Could be with you know some kind of brick material. Or you might have I've seen some permaculturalists do a really cool um, retaining wall where they build it with, uh, it's like a living retaining wall. You plant, I forget what the plants are in there, some kind of trees that you plant in and it actually creates a living retaining wall. Again, I'm not an expert on that, so I can't comment on that. But you would have another retaining wall here. And then, you know, you might want to, you could be able to form you know, three or four beds or something like that in there, and then you would do the same thing there. You'd shape your beds out here. And that would be an easier way to do that if you wanted that to be high rotation. But again, you really gotta look at a cost-benefit analysis. I say this a lot in my videos. Is it actually worth it to do this opposed to just having a slope and then doing some beds on that slope? You know, kind of like they did at, uh, at Pacaraca. It really just depends on your context. Um, for me, to, to imagine doing just like a few 50 foot beds to make a retaining wall, it probably wouldn't be worth it. However, if you maybe did 100 foot beds or a series of beds along that contour to justify the work, then maybe it's worth it. You really got to look at these things yourself and decide, is it worth it for you? But So I'm just going to leave it at there, but basically in short, you can farm on a slope. It isn't that big of a deal. You, what you want to consider is, do you want to have your beds running on the contour or do you want to have your beds running down the slope? I think the more extreme your slope is, the more you want to consider running your beds along the contour like we just saw in this last example. And then if you have more of a gradual slope, especially if you're in a wet climate, you'd, like to, you'd be better to have your beds running downhill to direct that water out. Now, if you were in a high and dry climate like me on a slope, then you might want to consider doing something like this. You're either terracing or swaling the land. Um, a lot of people or some people might mention something like key line design. When I was with Richard Perkins, his farm was all on key line, where a key, a key line plow is essentially this deep shank that penetrates the ground and just rips a deep trench and the ground you don't even see it actually when the, the grass kind of will grow back over it that's another way of harvesting water into the landscape now i haven't seen anybody do that in a market gardening context i don't think richard did in his market garden beds i think it was more about on the uh, richard perkins i'm talking about more about his where his pasture land was so i would actually be interested i'll ask you guys if anybody has done key line 
and then put market gardening 30 inch or 72 centimeter or 75 centimeter beds over that. I'm not sure, I would love to hear it if you did. But those are my basic thoughts on running a farm on a slope. If you, have, if you guys have more questions or comments, please leave them below. Maybe I can make a follow-up video. Um, I've, I'm kind of excited to make videos with this Apple Pencil and an iPad. It's kind of neat, so um, maybe I'll make some more videos that way. All right, guys, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification button next to it, and again, please leave your questions and comments in my videos. I really appreciate the, the feedback and questions you guys give me. All right, talk to you later.